Hello, probably non-existent audience, and welcome back to The Great Partition. I am Paragon Saber, and I might be a figment of your already non-existent imagination. While that simmers in, in the last episode, I am actually going to uh, start the game and let's play while I describe what happened then, we did have Muscovy initiate a war with Novgorod finally, actually more akin to historical time frame. 1478, Novgorod fallen in the real timeline. Here, 1472, and Novgorod's still got a fighting chance. Regardless, Muscovy also completed a war with Kazan that saw them swallow all of Nizhny Novgorod, as well as Kazan and Veda Suvar. Down here, Byzantium unfortunately losing all of its reclaimed Anatolian territories to a bunch of hungry Turkish Beyliks, and now having to deal with a rather large and raving band of Bulgar Bulgarian separatists. This will now be the second battle they've lost to them. Life pretty tough for the Eastern Romans at this point, though uh, certainly better than it was in original timeline. Over in the west, Castile has eaten all of Portugal save Lisbon and the islands that uh, Castile likely won't even bother with. Scotland again doing well in the north, though nothing has changed in the last episode. France with atrocious name placement, and Nevers, who part of that name is covering, uh, actually managing to take out Haino, though uh, their separatists might have something to say about that. Let's actually watch this battle as it opens. Nevers engaging with no leader, and uh, they're paying for that, especially against a 4 2 1. Forefire not great at this stage of the game, but uh, certainly better than no leader at all. There's Nevers with a 2-1-1 in response. They might be able to get rid of those rebels. We'll see. They'll definitely recover their men and morale faster. France now sieging down Orléans. Orléans, uh, about the only French miner to have survived the early game. I, I am not actually counting Gascony and Toulouse as French miners. They've done pretty well for themselves down here, though right now... Wow. Provence actually... Not full siege, but their three southern provinces sieged down by Avignon. Anybody else involved in this war? Montferrat. Provence actually at minus 99% war score because of those occupations. I'm not seeing an Avignonese or... Montferrasian army around anywhere. Ah, there's Avignon. But if I were them, I would definitely advise ending this war. Avignon might be able to uh, even take themselves a center of trade, or rather, uh, the Rhone estuary, out of the deal. Though I suppose peace might be uh, deferred by the Provence's making gains modifier. Hungary regained a lot of its former strength recently. Uh, they were formerly reduced to pretty much just Royal Hungary, and uh, they had taken back a couple Croatian territories. Then they called in a outright coalition of allies, uh, five of which they still retain, as well as a union over Serbia. But uh, they called in nine different people against Nitra and uh, recovered a lot of their cores, though Nitra still existing, though uh, likely to, to lose Premisil, or Premisil to Volinian separatists. The Teutons successfully resisted Poland-Lithuania's latest attempt at a conquest, though uh, the Teutons didn't get anything for themselves out of the deal either. Mazovia, still sitting pretty, has secured an alliance with its erstwhile overlord Poland, and uh, also holding down alliances with Riga Brandenburg. It would appear that some, well, we've had some territorial changes over here. It looks like Polotsk. Uh, no, they had Vitebsk. However, Smolensk has come into control of Rzhev. Not a fun thing for Novgorod to lose. Novgorod has secured, or rather has sieged down Moscow. Muscovy looking to retaliate by doing the same to Novgorod. But that's got to push the uh, war score from this war in Novgorod's favor. Not completely. Muscovy actually still at plus 13 despite losing a siege on its capital. None of Novgorod's trading cities really hurting all that much from this war. I mean, maybe being in the war uh, in general hurts, but... 
None of them are sieged down, at least. That's got to count for something. Nitra's Volinians... Actually, those are v Mazovia's Volinian Separatists. Now moving over into Moldavia. Speaking of, Moldavia losing both its former capital and Tegina to Crimea. Crimea definitely one of the nations in this scenario that comes out the rosiest. They lose zero cores at the beginning and a couple provinces that are usually not that accessible to them, being owned by Genoa, protected by the Holy Roman Emperor, are suddenly owned by Circassia and Trebizond, which uh, far easier targets. Speaking of Trebizond, they have now been taken by Kandar, the uh, Komnemnoi dynasty terminated. And the Bulgarian Separatists successfully sieging down Edirne, now sieging down Constantinople. The Byzantines completely out of manpower this, by this point. It is not looking good for them. They would have had to have won that, won that last battle against the Separatists to have had any chance. Meanwhile, over here, the Tabaristanis fighting Persian Separatists. Persia with cores on everything in this region, or so it seems, and uh, Tabaristan not exempt from that. Though, of course, Tabaristan, one of the few nations that can form Persia, should the latter fail to arise from Timurid Separatists. Speaking of, Persia putting the spurs to its, uh, well, to the Timurids. 22 stacks sitting here on Samarkand. Persia likely to, looking to pick up its core here in Herat. Le I find it rather likely that Persia will uh, go for Kiva in the future if they can take control of Samarkand itself. Definitely a great node to have control of, especially if they can send a bunch of trade into their home node. Now they'll need Mazandaran for that. Right now, Tabaristan's capital, but likely not the tallest of orders for Persia, considering Tabaristan not holding on to any alliances. We did see a war between Shervan and Gazakumuk earlier, and despite the smaller army size, we have Gazakumuk on top. They have taken the province of Dagestan. Maybe even a relief for Shervan, them not having to deal with this uh, non-accepted culture which is eminently accepted being the primary culture in Gazakumuk. Nogai, uh, under siege by Kiva and Afghanistan, that alliance has been quite helpful for Kiva, though they are now cut off from their allies by this uh, Timurid province here, Maimana. I try to deselect the windows by clicking on the seas, and it... Uh, makes me think I'm selecting the seas, or trying to select the seas. Regardless, uh, a lot of this area, formerly Khorasan, now reduced to only four provinces, just to the north of Baluchistan. Afghanistan doing decently. Uh, they have at least retained some control of their core provinces, and have expanded into Balti uh, Baltistan, formerly of Ladakh though not the greatest province. Still, they hold on to Kabul, which is an inland center of trade. I believe in the Kashmir node, or Kashgar node. I am mistaken. No, that is in the Kashmir node. I was right the first time. So yeah, Afghanistan and Kiva have been very good allies to each other. Now teaming up to siege down Nogai. Who initiated this war? That would be the Afghan conquest of Kulob. Kulob being owned by the Timurids, the Timurids being allied to Nogai. Actually noticing, noticing that a lot of these provinces actually held by Afghanistan instead of Persia, as I once thought. Though Persia is at war with the Timurids and appears to have actually helped take Samarkand for Afghanistan. Yeah, helps each other, I suppose. They sh certainly well, wouldn't help the player in a siege like that. Bengal looking to expand, trying to take out Jharkhand. Siege at 21% should be some pretty simple expansion for the forces of Bengal. In China, Emperor Yan doing decently for itself. 
right now has 69 mandate. Apparently supposed to be uh, losing 0.1 mandate per month, but they started out with 64. Right now they're at 68. Draw your own conclusions. Ashikaga is still the Shogun over here in Japan, though Yamana seizing a lot of power in the south as one of the daim daimyos. Wasugi doesn't seem to have changed much in a couple episodes. Generally, they become the daimyo of the north. Not the case this time. Ashikaga actually not... I repeat, not a great power right now. Interesting. Have any of these daimyos become independent? Yamana is still a daimyo. Shimazu is still a daimyo, though a lot of these have high liberty desire. Utomo is still a daimyo. Kikachi, a daimyo. So none of the daimyos outright becoming independent, but quite a few of them with liberty desire over 50%. In the west, France has successfully seized Orléans and got Normandy in the bargain. Can't remember, I, Luxembourg, the third participant in that war. France ignoring the uh, semi-easy way to get into the HRE. Scotland and England at war once again. This time... France involved in the war, but as in uh, your usual games, not really able to help Scotland, as they can't get across the channel. This, uh, the North Sea Squadron, England still holding on to four heavies. England has occupied this fort in Yorkshire and has moved on to Lothian, the capital. Tyrone here ready to help Scotland, and frankly, if they were to turn around and engage there in Lothian, I think that would be better for Scotland. Regardless, that, uh, defender's desertion versus what was a disease outbreak up here for England means this siege uh, closer than one might expect. We'll see how this tick goes for Scotland. Getting only a supply shortage versus a surrender. England in good shape in this war, all things considered. Having the siege there on Scotland's capital, gotta be nice. Though Scotland still with a troop advantage, considering Tyrone ready to defend. Is anybody else involved in this war? I, I think I might have seen Jelray involved on England's side. That is correct. The siege is not favoring Scotland here, considering Scotland losing two sieges and unable to even win the first one back before England sieges down their capital. If they don't act quickly, as in go join Tyrone and destroy that army with your great three-star general, Scotland might see all the hard work they've done reversed. Novgorod definitely hurt by that war with Muscovy. Forced to release Finland, give a couple provinces back to Sweden. The trading city of Finnmark about to get destroyed and retaken by Norway. The city of Perkanma also in that. As is the city of Viborg. So all of uh, Novgorod's trading cities involved in this war against Norway, though no aid seems to be forthcoming for Finnmark. Tver released as part of that peace deal, and Yaroslavl, actually a personal... Uh, ugh, also... unioned, I suppose, by Muscovy. Guess that might uh, mean or uh, provide a hint to what that unification CV was used for. Tver released as a vassal of Novgorod. I was pretty sure this was Novgorod green recently, but perhaps I was mistaken. Certainly wouldn't be the first time, and will not be the last. Poland at war with Austria, perhaps? I, uh, no, Poland at war with Lubick. Lubick and Hamburg in what war? Ah, defending their ally Lundberg. Well, right now, Lubick and Hamburg doing well for themselves, keeping their army together. Looks like they uh, just possibly pieced out Silesia. 
who is under attack by Bohemia as well. Still, we've got a Polish 13 stack on Hamburg. As soon as that falls, they'll be out of the war. And uh, Ludwig do doing pretty well for themselves. They have expanded, taken uh, Saxe Lauenburg and a province from Mecklenburg. Maybe we'll see a strong Hangiatic League, who knows. Scotland has combined their forces on Lothian, trying to get their capital back. England going back for Yorkshire again. Once that siege back, Scotland is right back in this war. They'll have taken some more exhaustion from having their capital occupied, but again, Glen Drummond, still strong, still a hero, and there's the wall breach! England only getting off with a supply shortage. Of course, find myself rooting a little bit for Scotland in this one. Always like seeing the underdog tags uh, come out on top. Provence dealing with some heretics. Lollards. Actually not losing anything in that war with Avignon. Interesting considering Avignon had Provence, Draguignan, and Dauphiné under occupation. Instead, Avignon just... Really status quo. They are guaranteed by France now, and still retain this alliance with Montferrat. You still have the Paleologos dynasty. Byzantium very likely to lose Bulgaria after they get done occupying the Bulgarian lands. Unfortunate for them. Still holding on to an alliance with Crete, and only Crete. I mean, it's still a better spot than uh, being completely surrounded by Ottomans, but how much better? Do have Achaean separatists rearing their head in Corfu, but like most rebels that attempt to siege Corfu, 8k is not going to be enough. So we might just have a separatist siege that sits there and goes on and on and on for tens of thousands of days until someone else attempts to attack Corfu. The nation of Corfu itself allied with only its partner in crime, Naxos, who himself has an alliance with Hungary pretty good one to secure, considering Hungary has grown quite strong. Taking back a lot of their cores from Mitra and Bosnia and Croatia. Uh, Croatia hasn't existed for a few parts, but uh, they did start with a few Hungarian cores. Meanwhile, Castile sitting on the Grenadan provinces, probably expecting a revolt or something. Right now it says there's no unrest, this down to 0 0.6, negative 0 0.6 that is. Can't help but wonder if they chose not to uh, take the event that gets rid of all of Granada's cores. Regardless, we're not seeing any unrest down here. Partially from luck, partially from the AI loving to increase autonomy. Those only at 74 autonomy, despite having the autonomy increased, so they'll definitely serve Spain in time. This war over, Afghanistan coming out on top. It looked like no guy in the Timurids might have been able to do it, but not the case. Afghanistan actually seizing Samarkand, Persia getting Herat out of the deal. And the Timurids being all but destroyed, they are now left with only Kujand. Who Kazakhstan more than happy to take. Except the Timurids still have an army of 11,000. So, uh, maybe I spoke too soon. Chagatai under heavy siege by Yarkand. The Oirat Horde still looking quite strong over here in, uh, central, eastern, uh, east central. Asia. Emperor Yan doing alright, still losing mandate, but perhaps not at uh, as fast a pace as before. At least at this point, they will not be taking all of that extra shock and fire damage, which is what led to Ming's loss of the mandate. Though Ming doing well for themselves in the interim, taking some provinces from Ning, including some provinces with 
16 and 15 development. Never count out the major tags. Even now, we could still see the Ottomans make a reappearance. Speaking of reappearances, there's Bulgaria as expected. The 21k Liberation Army being made the new standing army of Bulgaria. And the Byzantines reduced to the cores that they had at the start of this scenario. Still, uh, they don't have to deal with the Ottomans. They just have to deal with strong Turkish Balix. All of whom are allied to each other. Still find myself rooting for Sarahan. The White Hand. Wonder if... Oh, come on now. Aragon. Really? The game not allowing me to select provinces? Aragon probably not able to take missions as a junior partner of Castile, but if they were around, I wonder if they'd have taken the Defeat Saruhan mission. The uh, devs putting in some missions specifically for Aragon, of course it being close to Aragorn. They uh, have a mission to defeat Saruhan if the tag exists, and if they're down here in the southern Mediterranean, they have the mission to become King of Gondor, the uh, capital of Ethiopia. Do have some more fights over here in this peninsula, a doll at war with Yemen. Ethiopia's army down here for some reason, they are at war with Harar. Probably a good call, easy take for them. Medribari has been in a union under them for quite a while. I have clicked on Imeritia, who has gone Sunni, probably uh, from their time as a vassal underneath Crimea, which they still are, just with 100% liberty desire. Allied with their fellow vassal in Kiev, whose independence is supported by Genoa. I'd say the plot thickens, but... Genoa, Kiev, Imeritia, I don't think they're going to take Crimea. Crimea, a very strong entity in this scenario. The Great Horde still clinging on to all three of its vassals and receiving some tribute from Circassia. I mean, they're still around. That's good for them. Kazan about to be crushed by Nogai. Nogai definitely the superior horde at this point. Though, if the Oirat get over there, they might have something to say about that. Unfortunately, that nice-looking 445 ruler that we saw earlier not coming into existence, we instead have a 300 with a 216 heir. Eh. A 300, not a ruler that anybody would want to keep. Pretty sure every EU4 player would click the old disinherit button if they saw that, uh, assuming that they had the prestige available to do so. Every time I look at Naples, gotta check the great power list. Welcome, Korea! Taking, uh, perhaps the place of Ashikaga. Not directly, but, uh, as a Eastern European. Regardless, Naples still holding on to number 8 with 173 development. England at 177. We'll check the, uh, progress of that war in a second. Don't see any occupations from here. Korea at 197, uh, re research modified development. Actually at 249. Hungary with 207, Austria with 245, Persia with 270, 341 autonomy, or uh, rather tech modified, France with 323, Castile with 332, 419 as soon as they embrace the Renaissance. An eye over here on Scotland and England. This war is over, but rest in peace, Gl Glenn Drummond. Uh... Based on that, England has taken Cumbria back from Scotland, but both of the rich provinces that Scotland took from Northumbria still in their hands. I'm guessing what might have happened is that England pieced out for Cumbria and the loss of the alliance with France. But really? Like, France looks like a scary ally on paper, but England doesn't have to worry about them as much. France's navy will never, ever compete with England's, unless it's you know, controlled by a player or something, and uh, after France has taken a bunch of cores back. So really, it would have been more tactically sound for England to maybe break this alliance with Tyrone. That is what gives Scotland the extra punch in troop numbers. Even now we see England only holding on to 9k, Scotland holding on to 13, and Tyrone still sitting with 6, Scotland also allying Sligo, who has an additional 3. 
In South Ireland, it is Kildar who has established a bit of a hegemony. They're allied with England and Clan Ricard, so the line's definitely drawn on both sides. A lot of North versus South happening here. Thoman's still holding on to their three star general. Sega. Sega the Sarsfield. Not able to uh, accomplish quite as much as Glenn Drummond, but perhaps this time will come. Maria has, I think, been dealing with these peasants for decades upon decades. And if they were actually recovering then, they'd have enough to siege this down. But I don't know if peasants can actually recover their numbers, for one. And... Well, no. We're going to leave it up for one. Actually, the Separatists here on Corfu, uh, nowhere to be seen. Those were Achaean Separatists. Wonder uh, if someone helped Corfu out there. Up here we have Styrian Separatists ravaging Austria. Austria at war with France. And how, pray tell, has that come to be? That'd be the Austrian conquest of Champagne. You might recall that the Burgundian inheritance fired, granting Austria Cambrai, or Camerich. Uh, going by that, so... Austria hoping to take advantage of a weak, compared to their usual game, France. Now has Bourgogne under siege, but not seeing their army anywhere. There it is, over in the Platinum. Coming back to probably deal with these Separatists. Brittany also sieging down some French territory. They are... actually attacking them of their own volition. Thinking, yeah, Austria will hold them off. Toulouse also involved in this war, but not seeming to send any troops up to help their ally in Brittany. Palatinate also fighting against France on Austria's side. We shall just have to see how that goes. Ooh. My throat is definitely getting a tad worn out. If you've not seen episode 3, I actually had recorded episodes 3 through 6 previously, but then lost them all due to... Uh, Bit of a file error, so uh, this is episode 5, part do, and I'm feeling the effects of having attempted to record, uh, well, I guess what this would be a seventh episode, without any sort of practice at this. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I say that word far too much. Byzantine's also now dealing with peasants. And, uh, Yes, yes. Uh, Saruhan's navy out here uh, attempting a blockade on Macedonia. The dastardly forces of the Byzantine peasants. Since being reborn, uh, Bulgaria has re-upped their old alliance with Epirus. Wallachia pretty well reduced, still better than their initial starting position. They have Karalifold and uh, Hunedwara usually Hungarian provinces, they might come knocking at some point, considering no allies right now for Wallachia. Moldavia, in pretty sad straits, have now become a vassal of Crimea alongside Kiev. I guess if they were to all band together, they might have a chance against Crimea. Inter interestingly enough, Theodoro independent, to some extent, a tributary state of Crimea. Zaporozhia also in that spot. Crimea definitely going for a more diplomatic approach, not directly conquering all that much land. The only provinces they've outright conquered from the beginning being Ingil, Zaporozhia, Kaffa, Matrika, Adige, and Circassia, but extending their influence over to Bessarabia, and uh, they have conquered these two in Moldavia as well. Okay, I take it back. The Great Horde... The vassals have risen! With the help of Crimea, Chernihiv war for independence. 
Also, also just the Crimean conquest of the Great Horde. And there is the timer going off. The year is now 1480. I think I might try to do one more episode after this, despite the throat. Regardless, thank you, likely non-existent audience, for watching, and I will see you next time.